Hey there, welcome to the Joyful Rebels podcast. We've got Claire and Donna here. And I want to know, are you signed up for our YouTube channel? Do you subscribe? Because I just want to say really quickly, we are putting up new videos once, twice, three times a week. And hmm. these are some of them are yoga videos. It's our podcast. If you want to, you know, watch all the mannerisms and me talking with my hands uh, <laughs> and my kitchen, we, my yes, kitchen and my... our beautiful backdrops. <laughs> this was drawn by my nine year old. You'll hmm. have to look on YouTube to see what I'm talking about. Uh, but we don't share all that on social media necessarily to clog up your page. So if you subscribe, you'll get a notification when a new video drops. So just wanted to start with that. Uh, but today's topic. Let's get right into it. How to thrive during a time of transition or change. And so this topic is completely top of mind for me and maybe for many of you, summer. Summer mm. is, it's upon us in South Louisiana because I'll tell you, it's in the 90s here. My kids got out of school. They've already been on summer break for a week, which just feels kind of crazy for me because it's the middle of May. But uh, whether we're ready for it or not, that change is coming. And so also a little bit of a disclaimer, I mentioned summer break, all three of my kids are here. So, you know, if you're listening to us in the podcast or if you've seen the videos, uh, I'm not in some, you know, soundproof room, you know, with fancy equipment or anything like that. You know, this is real life. So if you hear stomping or shouting, you know, that's, it is what it is, but, you know, still enjoy and love having these conversations with y'all. So that is why it really felt, we've talked about doing an episode about change for a while now, right? And how we just want to talk about, you know, we say different seasons of your life are going to require different things of you. Everyone is going to go through these ups and downs. And so let's talk about it. How can we thrive through change? So what did I miss, mom? Or what, what is important to you? Or why should we care about addressing and talking about change? Yeah, that's a great point in, in to start with, because I think I've lived a whole bunch of my life just trying to muscle my way through a change. And then I can look in the rearview mirror and make sense of it. So this feels different from a strategy standpoint to recognize it while I'm in it, which wraps um, um, understanding around it in the time instead of just feeling, for me, I feel out of control during change. That's one way that I interpret it, although uh, in a few moments we'll talk about and give it a different name, but that's how it has felt in the past. And when I realize that change is not a matter of if, it's when. I mean, that's really it. I mean, it's going to happen. For some of us, we're going to have rapid fire seasons where it really happens quickly because of some external circumstances from some internal ones, whatever, that that it's not if, it's when. And when I set myself up that way, then I'm almost looking for it. And, and that is, then it's not to be feared. It's this thing that's going to happen and it's got a place in our lives. Often it takes us to another uh, season or or adventure that uh, all has good points in it. So I, I, I'm less afraid of it, although I'm not going to lie that there's, I have trepidation about it. I'm like, mm, here we go. We're changing again. Cause I like my comfort. I do. Mm -hmm. I like my comfort and I like to be in a place where I kind of have an idea, but what I'm finding is that, uh, that, that this is not a place that where I feel like I grow and I also don't ever want to feel stuck. So the stuck part is, is we hear that a lot uh, from our listeners that, that that's the place that is really where you don't want to be. So the good news is, is that change does happen. It, it happens uh, frequently. And as we learn to deal with it, uh, we can harness it. It's almost like, you know, harnessing a stallion. It's like, I want to use that power and understand what it's doing with and for me so that I can put some uh, label on it in a good way. So I can understand what's happening because part of me, I feel like I'm unconsciously competent about a lot of things. And I wonder if you're listening, if you do too, you're like, I kind of know that. I didn't know it had a name for it, but there's a, a, a an understanding that I have that is just innate. And I, I feel that way, very intuitive. And at, yay, if that's the case for you, awesome. Some, what part of our goal is to put some language around us, to give things names so that you can really concretely and confidently go, that's what's happening. Not like I kind of have an idea. So that's that really middle ground that's tentative and it doesn't feel very confident. I could say for my reality, this is what this is right now. So anytime we can lock it in and take it from unconscious to conscious, that is awesome. So then we wind up giving these tips then in order to get there where there's going to be several of them and you try them out and not all of them are going to work for you. But <laughs> here's the great thing. They don't have to work for all for you. You just have to try one so that you put things in context. Mm -hmm. 
And that's a big switch for me, Claire. And that's been through our discussions when it's not like I want to try something and now I have a brand new thing that works for me and life is just really easy and there's a bunch of rainbows and unicorns. It's like I try something out and I learn something. And so often I'm finding things from a negative standpoint. Well, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to look like, and I'm not going to shy away from that. That gives great information and that keeps coming up. So I, I hope as you're listening today, everybody that you, or you're watching, hi, uh, that you find something that you'll, uh, it will be of ease and you'll be like, that's an easy one. That feels successful. That feels good. And there'll be one there. You just like learn something is like, I didn't think that was going to happen, or I didn't understand that, or I didn't know that was part of the conversation because all of it just gives you more choices. And when you're aware, you have these choices and you just, you participate in your life. So let's get some more data points here. And if we dig right in, what that looks like is, is that why do we even want to talk about it? Uh, how about four tips? Four tips on, on things that you could do. And let's start off with the first one. And that is uh, how to deal with change. And the first thing is to acknowledge it, which at first blush, I looked at it and went, eh, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> I realized I've spent a whole lot of time making my way through change, not knowing what was happening, not addressing it in the least bit, feeling off my game, feeling like I'm not on solid ground. And then after it's done, being able to make sense of it. It doesn't feel that good. It doesn't. Because what we realize now, and this is research backed, is that if we acknowledge it and we give it a name, uh, it, we can reduce the stress that comes along with it. Because change basically equals stress and denying it ups it, like mm -hmm. denying it. And the story that really, there's a million of them. And I, you know, as, as you get into a topic, you're like, oh, this, 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 all the light bulbs go on and they do for me for sure. But I had a huge one in my professional life when I was with this company for a long time and they would go from public to private. So they would sell it in order to get uh, more resource, resources to expand. So not inherently evil by any stretch, but the messaging was, as a leader, we would hear like it's, it's being sold, so we're going from private to public, so now we've got shareholders, nothing will change. And I remember being like, okay, okay, let's go. I'm like, there's no way that nothing would change when there's a big change in the structure of the company. And I remember like changes were happening, and I was like treading water, and I wasn't, I wasn't feeling good about any of it. If somebody would have said, look, it's going to be rough for about two months. Like we had a chain, you know, it's, it, it might look like this or this. Ultimately, the heart of the company is still there, but there will be some changes here, you guys. Just, it's inevitable. I think I would have handled it differently. Mm -hmm. And I, I just was blindly like, okay, it's going to be the same. No, it wasn't. And it cost a lot of stress that looking back was really unnecessary. So I guess I, what I found out is I'd rather have the truth to be able to deal with the choices that were reality-based instead of fantasy and and intangible uh then uh and then trust there's more trust in that whole process than me denying myself what i was feeling because again we don't want to do that to our kids right you want you're having a feeling we're going to honor that we want you to trust your gut um it happens all the way through our lives depending on what system we're in where you have a feeling and and if it's not um encouraged or it's not, you can't talk about it, or there isn't truth in the situation, then we doubt ourselves. So I don't know if we're anything alike, but um, doubting ourselves isn't a great place to be because there's this huge inherent wisdom that's in here. But we live with other people and other systems. So I'm gonna do my best and Claire, I'm guessing you too, that when somebody's in our realm, we're gonna talk to them about the truth, we're gonna honor their feelings. And so then they get the chance to make it through their changes and transitions with the least amount of stress because your body will react to stress. And that is a fact, it's a fact. And not all stress is bad, but it can be. So, so part of it is, is being able to acknowledge that changes is here and like, this is a season of change. Then it just puts me like, I'm a little more strategically agile that I'm like, okay, something's gonna be different. And then it also allows me in that same topic area there to reframe if I need to. Like things can be different, but what's gonna be better? How are things going to be different? If there's changes that are coming, can I influence some of the changes? Because when there's chaos, there will always be opportunity too. So reframing for me allows me to be a player in the change instead of just having something happen to me. So the first thing is to acknowledge it so that we can decrease the stress and then also help to reframe it to be a player in the change and what that looks like on the day-to-day, -day, whether it's mentally, physically, or all of it. So 
So first things first, acknowledge. What else you got, Claire? Yeah, and I just want to uh, kind of piggyback off that, that uh, it is easy or I understand that feeling of wanting to be in denial about it because when you address change, it becomes real, right? Mm. And sometimes we want to live in that like, oh, if I don't shine a light on it, it's not there. And we've talked about that with shadow side and inner voice before. I'm just going to try to ignore it. But really, and we've said this before, if you want to make any choice, if you want to have choices in what's going on, you need to be aware of the current situation. And so acknowledging that there's change can feel maybe scary. Oh, then I have to admit it's real, but then that's when you get some power in it. So Mm -hmm. it's making that choice, that empowering choice to do that. Um, And I love how you also talked about being able to reframe it, um, taking a situation and maybe even being able to find some good about it. If at first glance, it doesn't seem like or feel like a great change. Uh, We have our entire first episode was about rewriting your narrative. So Mm. can you choose something that's happening? But again, yeah, looking at it, look at it from another angle, like look at it from around the side. Is something good coming out of this? Because I bet if you put your mind to it, you can find well, I'm showing myself that I'm more resilient. Like I'm learning things about myself. I'm learning things I don't like, right? We talked about that in the beginning. Like maybe I know how I don't want to be or who I don't want to be around. So it's all information. And yeah, again, as you mentioned, mom here, we're talking about four tips and how we can thrive through a change. These are ones that you might have thought of. Or, oh yeah, that, that makes sense to me. Because again, we do have that wisdom inside of us. But coming from us, you know, from our Joyful Rebels, we're coming from that science nerd background, which I say proudly. Yeah. And, you know, we've got the mother daughter. So we've got the generational thing going on there. But these are when we're giving you these tips, they're based in science. But we're also going to use science when we're using these tips, because like you mentioned this already, mom, but you're going to try it, try it out. Oh, this works for me. Great. And maybe it is that clean cut. Very nice. I tried a new habit and it's working and, and this works for me. Great. Love that. Or maybe. Mm, not really aligning with me or I'm not getting as much out of it. That is great information. So all these tips we offer in any episode, you're free to try out the ones that feel easiest to you that feel like, oh yeah, this is, I could, I could work this in. You're free to pick the ones that aren't really calling to you because if anything, you're going to learn more about yourself. And that is just one of these baseline things. You're a joyful rebel. You're listening to this podcast. We're all trying to learn more about ourselves to make these better decisions. So, okay, what can we do when we want to thrive through change? And the first thing is acknowledging it. The second thing we can do if we're in this time of transition and change is to do our best to stick to a routine or a schedule that we have. And this makes sense, right? If the change is happening, right, there's a lot of different things going on that can feel disorienting or uncomfortable at least, right? We talked about comfort zones and yeah, they're beautiful, but nothing grows there, right? So it's good to get out of our comfort zone, but it can be uncomfortable. So what can we do? We can stick to what we know. And that can look a lot of different ways. Maybe it's just trying to wake up at the same time every day, whether you have a schedule that requires that or you don't. You're going to just try to wake up, give yourself that grounding point right in the morning. Or maybe you're going to choose a type of anchor throughout your day where it's going to stay the same. I'm going to walk my dog every morning at nine. I'm going to meditate when I get home from work at 530. You're just choosing. So there's, let's be honest, a lot of things we don't have choices on. And there are Mm -hmm. things that are out of our control. But let's give us a way to ground down. So choosing something that you can do, and maybe it's something you already do every day, but being intentional about doing it a certain time, you're giving yourself a little bit more of a schedule or routine, something that's consistent. And that's another thing, consistency. So sometimes when we're going through a change or transition, there's inconsistency. Maybe you're expending a lot of energy one day and not another. And I know I'm talking vaguely because change can be so many different things, right? Right. But we want to find some consistency because that, again, will help us feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more grounded with our energy. And one final thing that we can do if you're dealing through with a transition and you want to stick to a routine or schedule is maybe even just writing down the main points that you've got in your day so that when you've done something, oh, I walked my dog. Oh, I made the kids lunch. Oh, I dropped that package off. Oh, I sent this email I needed to. You can check it off. Like, look at me, even with all this other stuff going on, I am still doing what I need to do. And you can break down things you need to do into little bite-sized chunks and tasks. Because again, 
when we're able to write this down, we accomplish it, we check it off, we're getting that feeling of accomplishment. Hey, I did that. And that can help you build that momentum in your day. I can do this. I can handle anything. Look at me going through my day, dealing with these things, maybe out of my control or these things that are different. And I'm still going to get through what I need to get through. So the first thing we can do is acknowledge changes happening. And the second thing we can do is do our best to stick to a type of routine or schedule, how that makes sense for you. What do we think? Mm. As you're speaking, it, it, it inspires me that it also uh, quiets down the all or nothing when I get into change. When I can keep some consistency with a couple of keystone habits, then I feel like I do have that anchor. There is something that's feeding me in a way that feels significant. And I have a little bit more in the tank to roll with the changes that are happening and to be present when uh, that does feel kind of, uh, it can feel out of control in lots of different ways. But this is just one place where I feel secure. I, I've, got, I've, I've got this thing that I've already done that makes me feel a certain way and it, it feels familiar. So there's, there's comfort in that familiarity when most of the rest of the things are gonna be not very comfortable, mm. influx, shifting and all of that. So again, there, there's a balance. So it's, it's breaking down and dismantling the all or nothing thinking in another way which I, I'm always looking for that because it shows up in so many different ways for me that all or nothing, that I, I laugh when I see it, but I'm like, here we are again. And here I'm going to practice something over to the left when actually it's helping in other areas as well. So I do love that when we look at our uh, at different topics, there's a lot of crossover because we are interconnected beings. So we are integrated in this. And I, I appreciate the integration of that. So I, I look for ways that it helps me over here, but also over there. So, uh, so even if you're not in a season of change, uh, sticking to a routine and having some some mm -hmm. regular things to count on is not horrible. Yeah. You know, you're creating <laughs> consistency. So, you know, again, it works on a bunch of different levels. And so we're we're finding ways to be consistent. We're acknowledging what's happening. Uh, a third way, another umbrella, is to either sit with your feelings or sweat them out. And I love the. Uh, the bookends of this, because there's lots of different ways to uh, help with your help your nervous system handle it, physically be in touch with your body. Claire and I are both athletes. We're both yoga teachers, and so I do identify with moving. So moving for me is medicine, and that feels really awesome. But that's not the only thing. And I also appreciate, as a meditation teacher and a person who has a sitting practice myself, that the quiet part too is very important in terms of regulating emotions, regulating uh, nervous system, because it's not all go, go, go. I want to be able to live in all the different states that my body and mind can go in so that when change occurs, I can experience the influx of the different um, emotions that I feel and, and it doesn't feel foreign to me. Like that's, that's familiar territory then. And know that when you are moving your body, that you don't have to want to move you just start doing it. And a lot of times your motivation will kick in. I don't think we can say that enough. It mm -hmm. keeps coming up. It comes up on all the different social platforms that I'm looking for. And I love that that's a conversation that is being highlighted right now. You don't have to feel motivated to move. Just go do something. And in the middle of it, you'll probably start to, it'll take over. Yeah. So know you've got help with that. And that's my interpretation of that is that I don't have to muscle through all of my movement or my quiet times. I just need to start. So like that to me, okay, I have some help when I do that. So the physical and mental benefits, not only of exercise, but also of being quiet are huge. And there's a ton of research on that. Uh, the way I boil it down to, it's about my nervous system. And again, I'll say it one more time. I want to be able to jack it up and move and get uh, uh, have an electricity through my body. I expend some energy so that then I feel calmer, but I also want to be able to allow it to settle down and not just go on hundred miles an hour all the time so that I experience the bookends daily. Cause let's face it, Western culture is like the faster, the harder you go, the more you produce and all of that stuff gets rewarded way too often. When if we do our own work on either end of the spectrum, we'll be able to take life's challenges and its influxes in stride without feeling like we're completely out of control. So the bottom line is not to be everything's under control. It's just like, I want a better surfboard. I want a better surfboard to ride the waves. And I feel when I spend time at those two ends of the energetic spectrum, that my mind and my body get a chance to be friends instead mm -hmm. of fighting each other. 
because they work in conjunction. We think we are, and we're going to be thinking people. So I'm not turning off my brain. I just want to create more gaps in my thoughts so that I have a little bit of space to respond instead of react. So uh, I love that it's warmer here. Claire, I know it's super hot by you. It's not super hot here in Chicago yet, but the, the getting out in nature is just a really great hack to do both mind and body together. For me, you know, some people it's gonna be walks, walk, walk your animals, have that. Me, bike rides, it's bike rides outside. They're not for distance. They're not for speed. They are to look at the nature that's around us on the path. Every now and again, you'll pass somebody and you get a little social interaction. But I find that when I notice different birds and different sections of the path that we're on, uh, that makes me feel so much more nourished than in the winter when I can't do that. So I'm just so glad that we're entering into that even more. Uh, but bottom line on that, when George, my husband's like, hey, let's go for a bike ride. 99% of the time I'm like, no, nah, not really. I'm kind of tired. And I'm like, and I've been taking this, these suggestions to heart. And I'm like, just get on the bike. Mm -hmm. Just get on the bike. And literally within like three minutes, I'm like, this is the best <laughs> thing ever. I'm like Pee Wee Herman on the bike with my legs out. I'm like, this is wow. awesome. Rarely do I want to go. Rarely. And, and that's coming from a fitness professional, a yoga teacher, somebody who moves. Nope. It's universal, you guys. Just get started, get out there, either sit or sweat with your feelings. And that way you get a chance to practice being in flux in a world that keeps changing too. What do you think about that, Claire? Yeah, and I will definitely second that, that, you know, moving my body almost daily because of these benefits, like I have to keep that in mind. Oh, I know that I will feel better afterwards. Oh, I know that expending energy will help me calm down. Oh, I know that when I do hard things, either with my body or, you know, sitting in stillness, which can be a hard thing, yep. that that translates to off my mat or out in the real world. I had that conversation with my kids today because they joined me for a, <laughs> for a yoga class and it got difficult. And, you know, there's, I don't want to do this anymore. I was like, actually that's kind of the point sometimes is that yeah. you get more comfortable with being uncomfortable um, and I do want to add one more thing that if, if sitting in stillness is something that feels um, or I don't want to do that or I can't turn my mind off which none of us can honestly right. um, I've really been turning to breathing exercises lately and actually if you check out our most recent yoga videos at the joyful rebels YouTube um, the beginners and the yoga for back and hips. Um, it starts with breathing exercises. So you're, you're seated and you're intentionally counting your breaths and there's different counts, uh, but it, you do it for a couple minutes and I kid you not, you will almost immediately, but definitely after two or three minutes, you feel different. Like your heart rate lowers. You, it, it affects your nervous system, like on a physiological level, like whether you want to or not. So again, even if you go into it, like, Meh, I'm not into it. If you follow through and do it for two, three minutes, you will feel differently. So uh, sometimes when we're dealing with these transitions or changes, like we said, inherently there's stress involved. One way to manage that stress is to take a few minutes and do a breathing exercise. And um, just try it if you have yeah. it. Like it really is. It's a tool I've now taught my kids. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like if all kids can do this. So, hey, if you have littles at home and it's summer break coming up and you need a reset button in the middle of your day, see if you can get them to do a breathing exercise for a few minutes. It, it's, it's a reset button for all of you. So how can we thrive through our transitions? We can acknowledge the change. We can stick to our routine and our schedules. We can sit with our feelings or sweat it out. And last but not least, we can find and lean on our support systems. So if you think about those that you interact with most or who you consider to be your circle, like, do they lift you up? Like, are, are, you, are you around people who are, you know, the feelings are more coming down or are you around people who lift you up? Because we are all connected and we can use this connection to help to elevate us. So. We're gonna find those people in our group. And we've had, we've talked about this the past couple of weeks as well, being yeah. able to elevate our conversations and mm -hmm. what that can do for us energetically and emotionally, mentally. So when we do reach out and like you said, mom, it's not like the people that are in our circles are with us 
every second of the day. I don't know if you said it on the podcast or in our meeting before, but it's not like they're there all the time. So we do need to catch up with people. We want to tell people about what's happening with us and we can get benefits from that. And the first thing that we can get is some emotional support. Like, yes, what you're seeing and feeling is real, right? We Mm -hmm. said when we acknowledge the change, we're saying something's real. And sometimes that's really powerful to have someone else say, yeah, yeah. You're going yeah, through some that's nuts. Stuff yeah. Or, yeah. Whoa. Like, okay. I see you right to be seen and to be heard. It's beneficial. It's powerful. And by talking to someone in your circle, you can get that. You can also get encouragement. Right. So I see you. I hear you. Whoa. You're like, you're doing awesome. Like, keep, like, I can't believe that you said you're going, you're, you're doing Awesome. And, you know, maybe there's even more to that, like some wisdom, right? Because sometimes we have all this, you know, this too shall pass and we have this wisdom inside of us, but it can be hard to see when we're in it. So when we get that perspective, and that's the third Mm -hmm. thing we can get from our emotional support people is just perspective, information. Am I too close to a change? Am I, or, or am I in a bit of a denial, right? So when we talked about number one being acknowledgement, maybe we need some help with that. And maybe even just talking through our situation with our support person can give us new information, can give us a different perspective. Maybe we can reframe it. We talked Mm -hmm. about that too, and view something good that's coming out of this situation. And then finally, tangible support. Maybe you do need someone to help you out, right? Depending on what the change is. Maybe someone needs to come pick up for kids for for you or walk your dog because you're having to work late doing something. Like, having people who can actually help you like as someone who moved away from family and had to build had to take time to build up support in a new area that is just so huge now to know that I have someone a friend that I could call if I if I needed someone to pick up my kids from school because I did not have that for a while and it's isolating and it makes the change that much harder so if you have someone that can actually step in I mean I had a neighbor we had the first day of school last year I went out and my car had a flat tire (laughs) oh (laughs) So, and this is the first year that the kids are going back in person because they did virtual for a whole year because of lockdown. So, I mean, there was a lot, I was able to call my neighbor and she came, we switched the car seats over there. She dropped us off and just to have that, like, if you have someone that you can call in those moments, you know, express some gratitude for that. That's another way that we're getting support from our people, not just in phone or text conversations, but actual support and knowing that sometimes that's hard to ask for help. And I was talking to another neighbor about that. She had surgery recently and she didn't want to ask her daughter to come, you know, I can do this on my own. And finally she succumbed and said, Oh, and she was so grateful to have the help. And it was just kind of holding up a mirror of like, that sounds like me a lot of the time. Oh, I can do it all. You know, we talked about imposter syndrome and how that Mm -hmm. shows up as I'm superwoman and I can do absolutely everything and overachiever asking for help. Right help yourself a little bit, get that help from your support systems. And a lot of times it's a two-way street because I'm guessing that your friends want to support you and they're going to get a benefit out of being able to support you too. And the last thing I'll say about support system, your, your people, your social support is venting is a thing that happens. And we've said this before, and there's a time and a place for it. And it can feel good to talk about the difficulties that you're having if you're experiencing discomfort in your transitions and change. But and there's some energy that gets behind that when you start venting. Mm-hmm. But my my challenge or my my request for you is if you're noticing that that energy is starting to ramp up, can we shift that? Like the energy, okay, good. Can we shift that into let's use this session now to brainstorm? Maybe we can think of we can work together then to try, you know, there's some energy behind it. Let's think of some solutions together. Let's think of some actions that I can take then to help me move forward from this. Instead of staying on this low level of venting, let's, we've heard this before, elevate the conversation now and start thinking of solutions and working together. So you can pick the brain of your support person, Mm -hmm. right? Who's a little bit more removed from the situation than you. And maybe, maybe has, you know, you know, that different perspective. And so you're, again, you're using it to your benefit, but I think you'll both get uh, benefits out of that, that working together, that connection then. So lots of reasons to reach out and use those people that you consider your circle, your support system, anything that sticks out to you, mom, or to add to that? Yeah. As, as we draw to a close, I really feel the, the building a better and, and gaining a better surfboard to ride all of the changes, especially in these transition times that it really isn't to make them stop. 
or shorten them or make them go away. That, that's not it. That's not realistic. It's not possible. And it's actually not how life works either. You know, change can be, even when change is good, it produces a little bit of stress, but we're writing it. We are participants in our life. And I think the biggest point that you made that, that I heard, Claire, was the, the connection piece. That when we're connected with, whether it's our neighbors, whether it's, it's friends, whether they're new friends, like you get new friends, like look for those, look for the surprise friends in unexpected places. And when we are connected where we can accept help, when we can offer help, when we can be there to be the ventor or the ventee, or which is not a coffee thing, um, but you know, just to to and to encourage each other to um, use whatever energy you're developing to be solutions oriented, to uh, acknowledge what's happening, but not you know unpack all your stuff there. Like there's there's just a time and a place for all of it, and we we ride together, but we ride together because we're aware and we have choices. And the more we take a look at these things and find ways to uh, to look at like, where where do I struggle in this right now? Like, just look at right now. We're always looking at low hanging fruit. Like, where are you right now? What is the one thing you could take away out of the four that we talked about? And you're going to look for them this week. Like, where would that show up? And you try a couple of different ways or just notice, acknowledge. Maybe you already have keystone habits that you're really consistent with. Give yourself some credit wins mm -hmm. journal like mm -hmm. just acknowledging like i'm already doing some of these things that's not a hollow victory that is a conscious decision to celebrate something that you're doing because it's so easy for us when we're competent smart capable to just say that's just how life is nope that we are uniquely made we do a great job we are thinking people will use that to our advantage. We'll regulate our nervous system. We'll stay connected. And whatever changes come about, we'll just ride those waves. We'll make it on the other side. And then we'll just wait for the next wave to come because that's how life is. So until next time, Rebels, you keep living your lives, being turning your awareness light on, being as awesome as you are, taking care of yourself and each other. And we'll reflect on this next week. Cool? See you next week.